tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Uh, I think fitness was sort of like part of my quarter life crisis at that time. Well, <laughs> mine was fairly recent. Yeah, mine fairly recent. If Hannah started when she was 13, mine was just really three years ago, so yeah. in 2017. So at that time, yeah. I was at that time um, when at that at that point in my life when I was struggling with my career. Parang I felt like bored. You know how sometimes when you're at work you're stressed, but also you're bored at the same time. So right. that was like sort of my, you know, like that point of my, in my life na parang I wanted to do something new. I wanted to spice, you know, my life up a little bit, you know. So parang at that time, parang I, I, was, I was just like super open to, you know, like doing something that's out of the ordinary. So that's when I thought, na parang, hey, maybe I should, you know, try to get into fitness, right? So yeah. at the time, I I tried to like experiment, you know, like different activities. I tried boxing, I tried running, and then, you know, eventually it brought me to indoor cycling. So it was actually my, it's actually my first love in fitness. I super love it. Yeah, it was it it was something that I was automatically. Um, I guess at that time when when there when there was like an opening or an opportunity to teach or to audition, um, mm -hmm. my top of mind thought because was like I love this so much. Um, I just want to share this type of joy to you know like all the other people who are experiencing it or haven't experienced this in their lives, and you know just take share and influence the joy with them of. And yeah. parents that mindset and giving them that mindset that you know fitness can be fun, you know. Mm -hmm. Lalo yes, na for group sure. classes. Um, for group classes, kasi it, um, it's actually a really uh, more than the workout. It gives you like this really good sense of community of camaraderie because you know you lift each other up. Eh. Parang you build you know yourself, uh, you build your strength physically, but also um, you get to share it with all your other you know classmates and ride right? yeah. So that that's actually one thing that really keeps me going, you know, seeing people grow and sharing, you know, what I love the most. Number one in group fitness is what Keith just said. It's really the community, making someone else smile, making someone else believe yeah. in themselves, making themselves stronger. It's a powerful thing because progress is addicting and having that strong community to build you up is everything and that's why fitness studios in the philippines are rising right now and we are thriving because we have these people with us so it wouldn't be for the movers we wouldn't be here yeah. right and i think personally i got into fitness as well because i grew up really performing so i was always singing yeah. dancing musical theater and I always call myself like an enter trainer <laughs> because more than just teaching fitness you're trying to inspire people to move and believe in themselves even the ones that have not you know started their fitness journeys you yeah. really try to reach out with these people and you kind of have to perform like keith knows what this means <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly yeah. Uh, for me it was not an easy journey it was something that was totally new to me yeah um, i think i find myself in situations where i constantly have to improve myself and evolve and acquire new skills so when i started uh, ride revolution again i was 20 or 21 years old and so i really knew from that point on that i loved teaching so much and that i had to yeah. find avenues of me to better myself so i got my certification from the american council of exercise and then i oh, got wow. into personal training and then i started um teaching band classes like resistance band classes in rockwell athletica i just kept exploring you know i just kept yeah, learning yeah. and taking other studios classes in manila and just trying to find the ones that fit me the best and then that's when i got into the movement studio which really had everything that i wanted which is like cardio and strength and the community that i love yeah. apart from those sort of classes i also do like personal brand deals because i'm a host as well so <laughs> i'm a host Dami racket. <laughs> racket. Yeah, <that's> <laughs> opened up for you now you never thought you'd ever now you never thought you would ever see that growing up or first see that rather well it's also similar to hannah in terms of like you know boosting my confidence you know it's sometimes like the skill and the confidence that i build you know within bike room or when i teach actually goes beyond so i get to apply it at work you know i get to be yeah, more confident that, yeah. present in business presentations and whatnot it also um, I, I get, I'd like to say that it also helps me with my interpersonal skills, 
Um, I get to talk to people better. I get to relate to people better, um, which is actually pretty cool. Um, a, a pretty important skill when you're in the yeah, business. Yeah, for sure. Diba? But one yeah. like super important thing that I learned or um, something that I learned or something that I can apply uh, would be multitasking. Because <laughs> um, multitasking, yeah. multitasking is a huge wit. It's, it's one of my huge weaknesses. Like, I cannot do a lot of things all at once talaga. But when you're teaching, you're actually forced to multitask. So sometimes yeah, you're, like, sure. you're teaching, you're on your bike, and then when we mm-hmm. were, you know, like back in the studios, you have, you have to think of a lot of things. You have to think of your playlist, you have to think of your mic, you have to watch out for your 40 riders there to make sure that, you know, no one's getting injured. Yes. You have to use the light pass. So there's a, there are like 10 different things going on, and you're the head of it. So you have to always be on top of your you game. Have to, when you're yes. Right. So that's something that I learned, or at least I was forced to learn um, when I was training. And it's something that I'm able to apply at yes. work also. Yes. <laughs> if you, Nicole, want to start teaching in a fitness studio or anybody else listening, yes. I think finding something that you enjoy is key because never force yourself into a workout that you don't enjoy. So find something you enjoy, find something that is effective for your fitness level, for your fitness goal, find a workout that you believe in personally and work, work, (laughs) find that discipline to take as many classes as you want, get your certification if you can, or just read as much as you can about the topic, watch videos on how people conduct themselves on YouTube and just like experience, just try to put yourself out there and audition and learn from other people, find good mentors. That's a, that's a big thing. I would just say, you know, take a leap of faith. Um, Mm -hmm. Don't be scared to try something new, mainly because, you know, based on experience, that's exactly what I did. Um, I just decided to try out something new in fitness. I loved it. Similar like what uh, Hannah said, um, I did everything I can to be really good at it, at the at mm-hmm. the craft. And then from there, when you have an opportunity to just you know go for it, just don't think, just you know jump jump on it, jump and then you know it'll yeah. happen if it's for you. If it's meant for you, know I like how we, um, as much as possible. Uh, I try to make it a point that. I close my laptop at 6 p.m. So whatever happens after 6 p.m., yeah. you know, it's tomorrow's well, problem. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah. you know, like, essentially, it's the same thing when you're working in the office, right? So when you have your desktop mm-hmm. there, you'd leave the office at 6, and then you just, you know, um, come back for it the next day, as long as, you know, yeah. you're done with all your deliverables for the day. Yeah. The thing about being work um, working from home is that sometimes work goes Parang it blends with your personal time and your personal life. And sometimes you can't help it, right? I mean, it's, it's just so convenient because your living room, like, for example, in my case, my living room is also my work desk. And it's, like, easily mm-hmm. accessible, right? So I, I'd like to think, like, um, along with time management, it's also about discipline on when to put a stop to it for now in terms of, like, work or, like, putting that divide and making time for yourself also. So... Uh, when I can and as much as possible, I really, you know, close my laptop at six. I put on my workout clothes and I, you know, hit Just my um, home yeah. gym. Yeah. yeah. And then after that, you know, um, when I still have the energy and if I really have to work, that's when I, you know, come back for it after my workout. Yeah. But it's, yes. uh, uh, you know, like it's already part of my lifestyle. It has been one of my non-negotiables in my life. So, and I don't want to completely lose myself while I'm working from home, right? So, it's also for my yes. Sanya. For me, um, I'd like to think that it's something that I see in the long run. Um, as I think I've mentioned a few times, I get bored easily with the things I do. Um, yes. So for sure, I, I, I can't tell for a person right now, but for Are sure, you? I'm going to find <laughs> something new to do. You know, like or like something that I want to learn a little bit yes. more of. But yes. for sure, fitness will always be part of my lifestyle. It's something that I definitely want to sustain. Um, especially yeah. indoor cycling, it's something that I really want. It's something that's really close to my heart. Um, but yeah, it's something um, I want to learn and sustain a little bit more, of course, in the future. I think, as I was mentioning earlier, finding a workout that makes you excited to wake you, up in the yeah. morning. So that is key. Never force yourself into a workout that makes you feel uncomfortable. Um, find 
a studio or a person or a coach that will inspire you to be better. I think asking for help, especially when you're st- starting out, is key. Uh, plan your schedules accordingly. So if you're working or if you're still in school, um, make sure to integrate as, as much as you can in your schedule. So even if it's just 10 minutes, even if it's just 20 minutes of your day, as long as you're moving, that's better than nothing. Try to set yeah. that schedule in your phones or in your laptop so you have nothing else, no excuses but to do it, you know. <laughs> and again, find a community that empowers you to feel good about yourself because you're not alone in this fitness journey yeah. and it might seem like it, but if you find that inspiration from someone else, then go ahead. Just start. Uh, I think that as we evolve, our passions truly change and we evolve, we learn from other people, we gather wisdom from other things. So I think that just knowing your personal skills, what you're good at and honing them and then finding a career path or an industry that you will thrive in. Because for me, like passionate about something could change in a couple of years. So know your skills cultivate those skills and find an interest industry that will accept you that's it i mean it, i'm not like that dreamy <laughs> about so it awesome. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was so good. find your skills cultivate it and use it wisely i love that thank you for um, that i would say na, so like always try something new um don't be afraid um, or get, like don't get intimidated by fitness. You know, fitness is actually there to help you not only physically but also mentally and emotionally. Uh, for me, it has really it has really been a lifestyle. It has become part of me and something that I can't you know like let go at all. So it'll always be part of me. And once you get into that, once you find your groove in fitness, um, always remember why you started. Always remember your goals and don't let that go. And you know, just continue to work on it until you achieve it. Uh, recognize that you are doing it for you and nobody else. You're, you are your own inspiration. You are your own fitness inspiration, I think. And recognize that fitness is good for you. It's meant to make you feel good, make you feel strong mentally and physically. It, find good mindsets for yourself as well. As I was mentioning earlier, always associate that working out is a celebration of what your body is capable of. Oh, I love it's a that. celebration of... Of um, you pushing yourselves to your limit and getting stronger and and recognizing that you can break through from your personal limits and recognizing that food is fuel. It's not something that you, you should feel like you should burn off and recognize that fitness is a marathon, not a sprint, right? So this is this is your entire life, you know. There's no there's no pressure for you to do to do this or look a certain way just stay healthy just stay motivated stay consistent our mantra in the movement studio is actually sustainable fitness so fitness that is effective and fitness is something that you can inject in your lifestyle and something that you will progress in so um also make sure that you have short-term and long-term goals for yourself so you can stay in 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 (laughs) in your own um in your own goals, I guess. Because it, it can be fun to just try different things. But if you want to lose weight, if you want to gain muscle, if you want to... There are certain trainings that are more um, beneficial than others. So, yeah. You know? So, Keith and Hannah's stories teach us that fitness is a lifestyle. To do it wholeheartedly, you have to embrace fitness as part of your life. You Through commitment, passion, and grit, grit just like with Keith and Hannah did, they did something extraordinary by building a career out of fitness. And to think it all started out of a hobby or the passion to get themselves moving. So yeah, there you have it. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.